Hello everyone, this is Mana from Bar Reza. Uh, today we are going to talk about how do interviews or how can interviews enable inclusivity in an organization. I have with me today Chaussie Haynes of the Chaussie Haynes Consulting. Before founding Chaussie Haynes Consulting, Chaussie has been a techie. Um, she has had an elaborate career with the last role uh, as VP of Engineering in Tile, where she was also heading the DEI. And she's worked in organizations like Zynga, Apple, Amex, NetApp. Chaucy is very passionate about inclusiveness and works extensively for, you know, bringing in more women in tech. Over to you, Chaucy. Ah, oh, thank you so much for having me. Yes, I, my, you know, my mission is really twofold around retaining women in tech. First, we need to empower women to thrive in this industry. And then I also work with uh, companies and leaders to ensure they're building inclusive and high-performing teams. And thank you so much for having me on your show today. Excited to be here. Thanks, Josie. So let's kick it off by just uh, talking about, you know, uh, Consider that I'm, I'm I'm hearing the I word for the first time. <laughs> why is it important, or let's just say, why should companies care? Yes. So you know, I think we've talked so much in this industry about diversity, but the diversity needle is not going to move without inclusion. And so let's talk about the benefits for companies first. Why, why do you want to put in these efforts, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons. First, if you have an inclusive team that's also highly diverse, you're 30% mm -hmm. likely to have higher performance. In today's economy, this next tip is really important, which is inclusive and diverse teams are more likely to thrive in a recession. And then the lack of inclusion is actually costing the tech industry $16 billion a year annually due to the replacement costs of folks who leave from unfairness, because 37% of folks leave every year from unfairness in this industry. And it's not just, we've talked about a lot of the, the positives from the, the cost perspective, but having a diverse team also leads to creating better products that consider different perspectives. And so it actually can fulfill more people's needs because technology isn't actually that inclusive these days. And it it's, can be subtle, right? Here's an example. Voice assistants are actually less accurate with female voices and those with accents. And the main reason why? Well, the employees are the main ones testing the software. And if your employee base isn't diverse, you're not actually going to be fulfilling the needs of potentially your very diverse customer pool. And so having an inclusive process means that not only are you also able to, you know, potentially attract more diverse talent, it also means you're hiring the best person for the job because you're using things like a structured interview process that reduces bias and helps you really target the competencies and what you're actually looking for. And you're evaluating people on that instead of, what we think we might need to evaluate somebody on. Wow, that last anecdote around voice assistance, <laughs> didn't know about that. But thank you so much. That's And, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up interviews uh, right now. But since we're talking about, uh, you know, how do interviews enable inclusivity or inclusiveness, uh, I'd just like to take a step back and maybe talk about the hiring process in general, right? So. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when the first that's that's basically the first touch point of an employee or a potential employee with the, an organization or an enterprise what can companies do uh, you know to, to to reflect the inclusive culture if at all uh, in their hiring process itself yeah so you know i wanted to touch on five what i call are common mistakes i see folks doing in this industry when hiring and because the opposite is like how we address these right right the first yeah. is you know i see companies not always having continuous training for their interviewers and i don't mean you have to sit your interviewers down for an hour training every time they they conduct an interview but what i do see happening is everyone gets excited you do interview training once 
and then it's never talked about again for like a year or two, right? Right. People forget these things. We need reminders more just in time, right? And it's not that you have to go through a whole DEI training every time you do feedback, but hey, what if you started your feedback sessions with a minute reminder, hey, unconscious bias exists and this is how it shows up. So as we're going through this feedback round, let's consider that, right? right? I think another area where companies can really focus is making sure that when they're looking at this, you know, it's really exciting to be like, oh my gosh, let's focus on diversity, but then instead of embracing intersectionality, there's a focus on just one aspect, like women or right. some, some other aspect. And the problem with that is then you're also not really taking diversity into account. The whole point is you want a combination of potentially different marginalized you know, folks. The, what I say is, we all have privileges in some areas and we are all disadvantaged in some areas, right? And you want people who have different blends of those so they can either they can leverage their privileges to help each other in the areas where they might not have the same privileges, right? And so don't focus so nearly on just one aspect. Really try to embrace intersectionality. The next challenge I see is on sourcing, right? I, I People get excited about, again, hiring for diversity. And then they're like, oh, this means that we should just be sourcing from certain universities that are entry level, and that's going to solve this problem. And hey, getting folks in at the entry level is great. I am not saying that that isn't the case, but you can't just have diversity at the entry level and assume that you fixed your company's inclusion problems, right? If the people at the top are not, is, does not look like an inclusive and diverse group, you might not really be considering all the different perspectives, right? And so here is rarely where I, I say, hey, continue doing what you're doing with the entry level folks, but also partner with communities that, that focus on different aspects. You know, there's women's communities, there's, you know, there's black and tech communities, there's Asian communities, right? There's lots of different communities you could partner with to help you find more candidates. And Right now, if you're not hiring and you're listening to this, right, now's the best time to be doing the next thing, which is creating an inclusive culture, right? Because one another challenge I see companies make is they assume inclusion and diversity stops at the hiring process. But the problem with that is you're not going to retain your talent if you're not only you need to create inclusive leadership then have those leaders build an inclusive culture and then finally operationalizing that into all aspects of your business including your goals and okrs and how you're holding your leadership accountable right and that work could be done right now even if you're not hiring at all True. and the last thing i suggest for companies to think about is making sure that you're not asking your underrepresented minorities to what I call handle DEI, right? And hey, if they volunteer, right? Like when I joined Tile, I said, I want to lead these efforts. I want to make a difference. And so that's one thing, right? I, I volunteered, I said, this is what I want to do. But what I see happening in so many companies is they go to the poor only in the room, right? The only woman, the only black person. And they say, hey, can you do all of this work on top of your day job and not get paid for it, right? And that is not setting anybody up for success. It's like the ambassador effect that, hey, only the minority becomes the ambassador of uh, whatever initiatives you're doing. No, that's that's true. That's uh, Thank you so much. I, I think our, uh, our viewers can actually learn a fair bit from that. And uh, important point about not hiring, still setting the inclusive uh, culture is, is is very relevant. I I don't think there is any time better than right now uh, mm -hmm. to set this up, right? When the whole madness around crazy hiring and everything is sort of settled down, and you you do have a time to reflect back. 
Great. Absolutely. And because, you know, I during the hyper growth we had in the middle of COVID, I had so many people tell me, Josie, I don't have time to build an inclusive culture right now, or I don't have time to start partnering with these communities. We need to hire these folks yesterday. Well, guess what? You now all have time. <laughs> You're not hiring at hyper growth. Right. It's the perfect time to be taking that in, that inclusion seriously and applying sure. it throughout your organization. Makes sense. Um, so now that we've talked about you know some of the mistakes that enterprises tend to do, any suggestions on best practices that you know companies can adopt and be more inclusive when it comes to their hiring as well as overall culture? Absolutely. And it starts from your job descriptions, right? And taking the time to make sure that your job descriptions are inclusive, that they don't have gendered language like rock star or aggressive, right? These can turn off women. So you can leverage tools like Textio or the gender bias decoder to review your res your job descriptions and look at them and say, oh, okay, are, is there language that I need to tweak? A bonus there is if you take your normal job description and actually turn it into what is called an impact-based job description. And mm -hmm. so there, instead of just listing out the requirements, because again, listing out a ton of requirements can be an inclusion issue because women only apply to jobs when they meet 100% of the requirements. Instead, right. you share what are the 30, 60, and 90-day goals for that job. That way, a candidate can much more picture themselves, hey, can I accomplish this? Do I see myself in this role? So that's what the first is get your job descriptions right. Next is how you talk about your company externally, right? And I am not talking about let's do some performative DEI and just show your only woman is your in your pictures. No, I am not saying that. I am saying if you do the effort that we were talking about earlier, you build that inclusive culture, you take the time to start looking at some of your metrics, maybe you take the time to look at your benefits and make sure that they are inclusive, right? Do you have equal paid time off for family leave? for for both parents right like that can that is an inclusion issue right? right if you've done that work talk about it externally right share this in your again in your job description in your company page take the time to share that you're working on these things so now we've gotten somebody potentially attracted to the role so how do we actually conduct the interview in a way that's inclusive. And so there, that's where tools like Bar Razor can really help with two of the aspects that I really talk about. One is structuring the interviews to be focused on competencies. And I had touched on this a little bit earlier, but so often, you know, we start an interview panel and we might not even know what questions everyone's going to ask, or maybe we do take the time to just like write down the questions, but it's about taking it a step further and really looking at what is this person going to be doing and what are all the different ways we should be evaluating that and how are we evaluating each of those competencies and you know like i mentioned bar razor can really help you create that structured interview plan and it can also help you with that it, something I mentioned earlier, that continuous training, right? It, again, it's not about having the interviewers get like an hour long course every time they sit down to do an interview, but if they can get little reminders along the way, right? Maybe when they're about to sit down to an interview, reminder, hey, be fully present, right? And take into account that, hey, maybe folks with neurodiversity may not present well in a video but that that that's not something to ding against them potentially right they might yeah. actually ask to turn the camera off because that's how they might be more effective right and so it's about making sure you understand these things and again at the feedback time right taking the time to not have recency bias with feedback and leveraging tools where you can say oh i'm evaluating somebody maybe on how well they read code. Let me make sure I'm reviewing that part of the interview before I'm evaluating on this, yes. right? Um, another best practice is utilizing interview teams 
uh, that have diverse panels on them, right? One thing here is, again, if you're just getting started, do not burn out your poor only woman or potentially black employee or, or LGBTQ employee and have them do every interview, right? Again, try to, to balance these things. And finally, nothing moves if you don't measure it. So start setting goals around your initiatives and, and seeing where you have progress, right? Looking at your metrics on hiring, how many candidates from you know different ethnicities are you getting and where, where are you seeing drop-offs, right? If you see all of a sudden people get to that second interview and none of your diverse talent is getting through that panel, like that's something to look out for. But again, it doesn't stop at the hiring process. You want to also look at within your company, what are your pay, your promotion, and look at them by the different, you know, aspects, race, gender, disability, and see where you might have gaps, where you might want to focus your hiring efforts. Wow, that's interesting couple of things I'd like to just add here. So I think within um, interview structuring, as you mentioned, right? So structured interview is, is a very, very uh, established and proven way of, uh, you know, hiring people for the job that they're going to do. But the whole 30, 60, 90, I think is very impactful. We also have something called as the 30, 60, 90 interview, which sort of focuses mm -hmm. on how people are going to perform. And uh, the last part uh, specifically, you know, that reminds me on evaluating or measuring. So there was one of the clients that actually saw that after the third interview is where most of the candidates used to drop off. And I still remember a bunch of uh, people out there actually felt that the third one is the really important one because that's the tough interview that people are not able to crack. Until then, unless they started seeing where the candidates are actually ending up, after having dropped off from their process and they were going to brilliant companies and brilliant roles and, and doing very, very well. And that was an eye-opener that, oh, it was not really this, but uh, it was not really the quality of the interviewer, but it was more around the way, you know, he or she rubbed off candidates. And and yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. I can totally relate to that. Thank you so much, uh, Jossie. Uh, moving on. Uh, we have so many tools these days. Right? You just mentioned a few. Uh, I would love to know if you see technology, right? And and uh, it is in, in, in all aspects, right? Within the context of either technology teams or, or even on the general technologies that are out there available to hiring managers. How do they impact inclusiveness in, uh, in the hiring process? Absolutely. And so, you know, I think there's a t there's a lot of tools out there that can really help with these things, right? And I think with the AI revolution that we've got going on, I definitely want to touch on that as well a little bit, right? Because but let's start with the tools and then I'm going to go to AI. So with tools, you know, I already mentioned like Textio and the gender bias decoder are really great for reviewing job descriptions. You know, Bar Razor is great for those structured interviews and the reducing the bias in the feedback. <clears throat> There's tools like Seekout that really help you search for different demographics, right? You actually can't go on LinkedIn and search by, you know, gender, or race, or different things. And Seek Out actually lets you do that. Um, and there's other tools like that. Um, leveraging technology, again, to help you with your data and insights, right? One of the things that I ended up realizing at Tile was, our, our HR team wasn't always the best equipped to do analytics, right? And right. so I actually, our, our head of analytics uh, uh, at the, and our head of data engineering at the time was very passionate about DEI. And he actually helped them figure out how to do some of the analytics, right? And so right. again, this is where an engineering team can help out, right? You don't usually hear a head of data engineering going and working with HR, but this is a great, it's data, right? It's just different data than might be Correct. for your product, but they, they tend to be the best at analyzing it, right? So leverage your teams for that. Um, and so absolutely leverage technology to help you with, with measuring these. And also the last tools that I didn't mention is surveying your candidates and your employees, right? So you could you know, use CultureAmp or a multitude of other tools to, to really help you dig into asking inclusion questions, right? In some ways, it's easier to measure diversity because we can look at the different demographics, right? But 
really it's about asking questions about inclusion. Do they feel like they're belonging? And the best way to do that is potentially through a survey. And so I think there's a lot of tooling that can help. And then also, I think AI can help us in the future, right? But I think the one thing that we need to take into account when it comes with AI is that the input that a lot of these machine, this machine learning is using is what's publicly available out there. Yeah. And guess what? What's publicly available out there has bias in it. And it's right. not... And, you know, chat, let's look at chat, chat GPT, for example. They've done a pretty good job of coding out what I call is blatant bias, right? You can't ask right. it to, to create, give you something completely biased. But where bias does show up in chat GPT is in some of the more subtle ways an unconscious bias shows up. Uh, the CEO of Textio actually has been doing a weekly series where she's been looking at uh, chat GPT. And the one that she discovered recently, which I thought was very interesting, is the gender it assumes for different professions, right? Mm -hmm. So when it started writing about, I believe it was mechanics, it almost always said he, right? Okay. And so again, it's this subtle bias that shows up in our in our day to day, right? Yeah. If if somebody says to you, you know, picture an airline pilot, you most likely picture an older white 50 to 60 year old man like that is the first thing that comes to your Ooh. mind and again it's it's our brains right and it's not that this is a bad thing per se right this this ability is also what empowers us to drive a car without having yeah. to think every single second but it means that we have to slow down sometimes when we're making our decisions and also slow down when we're leveraging these tools to ensure that we really are taking bias into account. Like that's something we have to consider as humans. We can't just let the technology assume it for us. Cool. No, that's, that's really interesting. I'm going to do some search on uh, chat GPT as well to figure that out. But uh, thank you so much. I think uh, AI revolution is sort of started or sweeping the world away right now. And we need to be definitely cognizant about what it has and what its limitations are. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I would just like to, you know, maybe uh, have some concluding remarks before I go into a small section of recommendations uh, that, you know, you'd like to uh, pass on to our viewers. So any, you know, in terms of concluding the entire conversation, what would you like to uh, talk to our viewers about if they have to take something away? What is that one or two things that they should? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest takeaway in our current economic climate is focus on building your inclusive culture, because guess what? Technology is a boom and bust, you know, economy cycle, right? We are yeah. going to go into another hyper growth mode at some point, right? Yes. We've We've seen it before multiple times in this industry, right? And so set yourself up for success now. Start by really considering how you can make your leaders more inclusive, how you can build that more inclusive culture. And, and think about it in your day-to-day -day practices, right? How can you make your meetings more inclusive, right? Because right. if you focus on something that happens on a daily basis and make that inclusive, like that can really help all aspects of the organization. True, true. Absolutely. Um, any recommendations for our viewers where they can learn more about inclusivity or how to build inclusive te teams or culture? Well, definitely go check out my LinkedIn. I've been doing LinkedIn lives on these topics, right? Um, Alaria Partners is a wonderful community that also talks a lot about inclusion. Um, mm -hmm. I've also started putting all of my content up on YouTube. And so, because LinkedIn does not have great replayability. So there's going to be, there's already, I think, over 30 hours of content on there. So there's definitely lots of great topics from how to apply empathy to code reviews to uh, building more inclusive and high performing teams. So uh, those are definitely some some places to check it out. Awesome. I'll share a link to your YouTube channel very soon. Uh, 
uh thank you so much jossie thank you so much for your time it was it was lovely talking to you and i think we've all learned or taken a little uh, snippets of what it would look like uh to build an inclusive team and how can our hiring process and interviews help us in doing that thank you so much uh and uh thank you <laughs> thanks thank you for having me it was great being here bye bye